Hello, and welcome back to another episode of How Quickly Can I Film This Before the Baby Wakes Up? Just kidding. Hey guys, Natalie here, and welcome back to Hey, It's a Good Life. I'm so glad you're here because today we are answering the question, what is the difference between soil, compost, and mulch? So today I am mulching my garden beds because I'm going on a trip. I'm gonna tell you where I'm going just yet, although many of you can probably guess. If you know who gave me this shirt, Oh, he is faithful in every season. He is faithful in every season. And you know where I'm going. All right, you guys, so before we hop into anything, if you haven't already, please do hit that like, subscribe, and leave me a comment down below because it really helps our channel grow. All free ways to support us, and we so appreciate it. Thank you so much. Also, when you hit that thumbs up, it tells YouTube, Hey, I like this video. I found it helpful and it suggests it to other people. And this is one of those videos that I'm hoping answers a really critical question. All right, so if you have ever asked yourself, what is the difference between soil and compost, soil and mulch, mulch and compost, you are in very good company because a lot of us beginning gardeners have asked that question as well. And if you have ever felt confused about the differences between soil, mulch, and compost, you are also in good company because a lot of us beginning gardeners have also felt that as well. And I don't blame you for feeling confused because oftentimes those things, soil, mulch, and compost are used interchangeably, kind of. For example, some people will say you can plant directly in compost. Well, does that make compost soil? And does that make soil compost? Some people will say you can use compost as mulch. So is mulch compost or is compost mulch? And the short answer is yes to all of the above. Allow me to explain. Before we go any further, if you have something helpful to contribute to the conversation today, I wanna to invite you to comment in the comments down below. Today's going to be a really basic overview. We're not gonna go super in depth on things, but I do wanna answer that question, like what is the difference between soil mulch and compost and answer some of your questions about those differences that I've gotten in my DMs and comments recently. And this is a place where we can all learn and grow together. So please be kind and courteous as we learn and grow together. And if you have something helpful to add to the conversation, please do so in the comments down below. I have one very sleepy cat in the window who's upset that I just am blocking his son. Sorry, Ollie boy. Hey, I am first off going to straighten this shot a little bit. I need to mulch my garden. Ugh. Ugh. I have officially have a super nose after having a baby and somebody is like spray painting something. Ugh, ugh, I like really don't feel good after that. Let's go hang out in the greenhouse. I feel like a stowaway, like hiding in my greenhouse from the big bad monster of chemicals. Oh. Oh. Excuse me, I'm just huffing my plants over here. All right, so what is soil? Here's what soil contains, right here. <laughs> soil is complex. It's got its whole own ecosystem. A lot of people say that soil is alive. Soil is, I guess in some parts, alive, but it's almost more of like a city where there is life. It's more of like the host of life. So soil is what you might find in my garden beds, and that is what I want to protect before I go on this trip. All right, so here is an example of what soil looks like in my garden. So you can see that it kind of clumps together, but also breaks apart a little bit in your hands. You can also see and feel that it's got grit. There's like sand and perlite and maybe a little vermiculite as well. You can see some different components in there that are inorganic but you can feel the softness of the organic materials like worm castings and worms themselves probably. Also other broken down plant matter. So like old mulch that has broken down over time and has turned into a nutrient for the soil. So that's what my soil looks like. Soil from the store might look a little something more like this, even more defined where you can really see that perlite and really feel that loose, porous kind of spongy texture. Again, kind of clumps in your hand, but can break apart easily.
So let's talk a little bit about what is mulch. So mulch is anything that you use to cover soil. Now that's where it gets a little bit confusing, right? Because you can use compost as a mulch, but you can also use leaves as a mulch. You can also use bark as a mulch. You can also use wood chips as a mulch, but like I said in one of my last videos, which spurred the discussion uh, about this topic in my DMs and in comments, you don't want to use uncomposted wood chips. You want to wait until they have kind of done some mineral gas water exchange. Uh oh, I think I just heard the baby. Did you have a good nap? Was that so good? It was so short. It was only 40 minutes. It was so short. How do you feel about that? Was that good sleeping? <laughs> Who's that baby in there? Oh, you want to get that? So mulch is essentially anything that you use to cover soil, to protect it in one way or another. And one of the biggest ways you protect soil by mulching is by helping it retain its moisture to an adequate level. Now, what kind of mulch you use is dependent on your climate. Hi. Let's take you inside just in case what mama smelt is not good, okay? It smells okay over here, but maybe it's not safe. So just in case, okay? Wanna go hang with Dada? I feel safer over here. I feel kind of like there's like some kind of a wind or draft that like is not picking up that scent, but still I feel safer if she's inside and let's knock this out. Okay, so recap. Soil supports life. It's where you would want to plant your plants. Mulch supports the support of life. So it supports soil by keeping it healthy and preventing erosion and splashback and dehydration of the soil. And so mulch is anything that you would layer on top of soil to protect it and essentially help it retain its life-giving properties. Now, as I mentioned before, I'm using leaves as mulch. Pretty obvious what that mulch looks like, but let me show you what another form of mulch looks like. Now this is another form of mulch that some neighbors gifted me. And it is, oh, that's not really a good example. It's fine. Oh, here's a better example. It's really, really woody, but it also has a lot of finer particulate in it as well, which you can kind of see right here. It's a lot finer. And this is the stuff that's kind of giving me a run for my money or giving me a little bit of trouble because it seems to have created a barrier between the top layer here of the mulch and the soil down below. So learning a lesson for me that I needed something more porous. Here's a better example of that same mulch. I had a bunch of extra, so I just filled these beds with it to save it. You can see it feels really dry. There's like dust coming off of it, but there's also like a lot of wood going on. I don't know exactly what's in this, but it's just parts of it are too fine and are creating a barrier for me between the soil and the top layer. So it's proven to be kind of problematic for my dry zone 10 San Diego garden. So then the question is, what is compost? And this is like way, a way deeper conversation than a quick, you know, 30 second answer that I could give you here. But essentially compost is the breaking down of materials, organic materials. So you know about compost. One form of composting is using worms to break down organic material and that's vermicomposting. So it's a way to break down materials that would otherwise not be very useful to the garden into something that is very useful for the garden. And so then you can use compost to revitalize and bring nutrients back into your soil. So compost is another way to support soil. So really mulch and compost can both be used to support soil and to support life. All right, and last but not least, you know, I'm gonna mention the worms because I absolutely love them. Here's one of my bins going strong, lots of biodiversity and life. And here's what my worm castings look like. Also very just spongy, very, very soft, very light, very fluffy. Can kind of clump them together, but with a little help, they do break apart easily. And that is what my compost looks like. Compost is one of those things that <laughs> It can really vary from region to region, from different item to different item. I once used like horse manure as compost and obviously that has a totally different smell, feel and texture. This is essentially odorless. 
And I really love worms because you can use them just about anywhere. I mean, look at all of the compost that I'm making right here in just three bins, in just six bins. Please forgive the mess. So I really love, ew, I really love using vermicomposting because it does allow you to make compost anywhere, especially if you have a small space, can't recommend it enough. And it's something that you can use right away. It feels really nice. There's no odor and you can do it in a really small space. I mean, the list goes on and on. So I love worms. Okay, so to recap again, soil, organisms, liquids, gases, minerals, and organic matter. Those are the five things that support soil. Mulch is anything that you use to cover and protect the soil. And compost is anything that has been decomposed into something that is offering nutrients to the soil. So hopefully that helps answer some of your questions of like, what is soil versus compost versus mulch? That's like a very basic overview. This is where if your question came in last week of, can I use wood chips that have been laying around a while on my garden? To which I said, probably, but I would recommend always to try a small area first and see what happens before going over the entire area because you really never know with wood chips if you've waited long enough. Now she said that her wood chips had been laying around for I think she said about six months and had been rained on and so they had had like significant interaction with the environment already and so they were probably okay to add to the garden but again if you're going to try anything new like a new kind of mulch a new kind of compost anything like that you want to try it on a small area first and see how that responds before you add it to the whole thing take it from me i added uncomposted wood chips to my whole garden and we all know what happened there so try it a little bit at a time rather than just getting so excited and doing the whole thing So let's talk a little bit about how these things translate into what you can purchase at the store. So item number one, soil. That is essentially potting mix. Now potting mix is something that is made and manufactured and it's not necessarily something that's like coming directly from the earth. There's many things that most manufacturers add to their potting mixes to make them, you know, meet all five of those criteria. They're going to add organisms sometimes. They're going to add um, organic matter. They're going to add things uh, like minerals and other things that help with water regulation like perlite and vermiculite. And um, there's all sorts of things that they might add to make their mix kind of special and unique to them. Now, I had the great misfortune of buying soil this last season that I thought was going to be great for starting seeds and it killed all my seeds because the theory is that uh, they had not finished composting the organic material part of the soil. So the compost that they added to the soil was not done composting because of COVID and they were trying to crank things out faster than should be cranked out. And with some versions of compost or decomposed material, you need to wait a certain amount of time because it's too hot and like hot compost can kill stuff. And so that's ultimately what ended up happening to me. So the compost that was added as the organic material to the soil that I purchased, the potting, potting mix that I purchased, uh, needed more time. On top of that, I think there were also some fungus gnats. So there's also that the worms will eat your roots. So um, there was also that issue. There were like a lot of issues with that bag of soil. Um, some of you guys asked me what it was called and I already blocked it out of my mind. It came in like a white and purple bag. Um, yeah, I, I don't remember what it was called. If I remember what it was called, I would share it with you guys. But um, all that to say, my favorite potting mixes or soils to buy from the store are Fox Farm Ocean Farm ocean forest mix or happy frog mix those have never done me wrong they've always been really great sources for starting seeds or potting in a large pot uh, those are some of my favorite mixes to use and that's what i used to start all of these wonderful plants in the greenhouse this year and i've had such huge success because yeah they really know what they're doing and they've got their mixes spot on and i don't think that either one of those companies would want to risk their integrity and crank anything out faster than it ought to be. And so I trust those companies to provide good soil. I'm not sponsored or anything. I just really like those mixes. So um, those have always done really well for me. So soil is essentially potting mix uh, when you're looking for it at the store. Mulch is like a whole other category. Q 
Q new category, Q new um, angle. Slightly, slightly different angle here as the sun is like shifting on me. Um, so mulch again is one of those things that could have like a thousand and one definitions. Sometimes you see mulch used and it's like in a variety of colors and it's used in landscaping in a red color. Or for example, when we went to Canada, uh, we saw a lot of black mulch and then my mother-in-law decided that she wanted to use black mulch in her garden. It looks so good. So sometimes mulch can come in different colors. Sometimes mulch is just something that you find in your backyard. And so for me, gardening on a budget, I have discovered that I really like to use leaves in my garden as mulch. And let me tell you a little bit more about why. Okay. So back to the topic at hand and why I've brought you along for this video. So let me tell you a little bit about what I'm doing and why. So today I'm adding mulch to my garden, like I mentioned earlier, and I'm doing so in a way that makes a little moat around each plant so that it can actually help capture water where it needs to go. And that can be a more efficient way to water your plants. Uh, I've discovered that here in <laughs> Southern California. You really want the water to go where it needs to go. And so if you have to direct it somewhere, you're going to want to direct it to the base of those plants. And now for one of the most fascinating things I've learned about mulch in the last year. I am using leaves because A, they're free. but I'm using these dried up leaves that I found here in my garden because it works best for my climate. And this is what is so fascinating to me about mulch is that you want to use a mulch that is appropriate to your climate. And I learned this on Charles Dowding's page. Charles Dowding is an amazing resource. Uh, Charles Dowding had a Chilean woman on his video and that Chilean woman I think also had Charles Dowding on her video. If I can find each of those videos, I will link them down below. Um, but Charles Dowding was talking with her about why she was using, I think she was using either straw or hay, whichever one doesn't have the seeds, I think is what they were using. And she was saying that she uses a drier, more porous medium for her, I'm sorry, for her mulch. She uses the drier, more porous, porous medium for her mulch because that works better for her hot and dry climate. Now being in California, our climate is very similar to that of the Chilean coastline. And so that was an aha moment to me because I had tried to use more dense mediums as mulch in the past and they do not work for this climate. They end up just creating like a crust on the top layer of the soil and then not actually really letting anything go through and then it becomes hydrophobic by pushing water away and then it becomes this huge problem. I'm actually kind of dealing with that over here in the pollinator garden and I'm working to address that story for another time. All that to say I now use leaves that I find in my garden that have dropped from the trees because A, they're free, B, you know, support local ecosystems by using what's, you know, available to you in your area, but C, it's what's best for this hot and dry climate. Now on the reverse or on the contrary to that, if you live in a cool, wet climate like Charles Dowding, you might actually want to use compost as a mulch. So again, compost, mulch, and soil are all three unique things. However, compost can be used as a mulch depending on your climate. So if you live in a cooler, wetter climate, you might be able to use something like vermicompost or composted uh, fruits and veggies and organic material. Uh, but if you live in a drier climate like me, you're probably going to lean want, want to lean more towards the drier, more porous mediums like local dried up leaves, like uh, straw or hay, whichever one doesn't have the seeds because then you have the seeds and then that can be a problem. Um, the other thing about using straw or hay is that sometimes you don't know if it's been sprayed and there is a risk of wrecking your soil by using those mediums. And I find that using the, um, using dried up leaves is not only free, but it has a much higher success rate of not having poisonous things like we just smelled earlier and like still recovering from. I can't believe I like let myself smell that as long as I did, but anyway. Um, yeah, 
So you'll want to use something more porous and dry and something that can protect the soil while also still letting a lot of water through to protect that soil below. It's going to help with water retention and water regulation in your soil. It will help prevent any kind of erosion of your soil. It will prevent any of that soil turning into dirt, which I've had happen. And you won't have to deal with that problem of using compost as a mulch and then having it cake up. So yeah, you can use compost as a mulch in wetter, cooler climates, but I would recommend using a more porous, drier material in hotter or drier climates as a mulch. Hopefully that helps make sense of that one for you guys. That was like a huge thing that I learned this year that's been um, a huge success in my gardening career. So hopefully that helps you guys a little bit. And you might be wondering, Natalie, how much mulch do I add to my garden? You may or may not like me for this answer and I'm really sorry, but the truth is it really depends on your zone and your climate. Now, I can tell you what I do here in zone 10 in San Diego where it's very hot and very dry in the summers. I add about half an inch, maybe, and I kind of see how that does. And if I need to add more, then I'll add more. But really my goal is to just get a nice even coverage with those little wells to help capture any rain that we do get, capture any uh, water from our drip line, which we are installing a new drip line very soon, so stay tuned for that video. Um, a nice kind of thin-ish layer. I don't add a whole lot, really just enough to kind of protect that soil. But the thing that I would tell you, again, is ask the people in your area, ask your neighbors, ask your fellow gardeners, find a local garden group to kind of pick their brains and see what they do and see what they recommend. And then just try it yourself and see what works best for you. Ruby loves to water the garden. You love to water the garden. You're a big garden baby, aren't you? See ya. I love to garden with my mama. Once I've applied mulch, I like to water it down just to kind of establish that relationship of, hey, I've added this to protect you soil. Soil meet mulch, mulch meet soil. We've got a new symbiotic relationship going here. And now the last thing is that Charles Dowding in his cool wet climate uses compost also as soil like he plants directly into compost which is not something i have found to work here in my hot dry climate my hot dry climate needs a lot more porosity is that a word it needs more porousness so it really depends on your climate and if you have questions about these things i would really encourage you talk to people in your local Facebook gardening groups, hop on some of the bigger Facebook gardening groups like the Roots and Refuge Facebook gardening group is an amazing resource for asking some of these questions. Um, and just, you know, binge watch different videos of people in your climate who can offer some insight. Um, ask your local feed store, ask your local gardening center what they recommend because they'll probably be able to tell you a lot better than somebody who lives in a different climate than you, than a different zone than you, what's best for you. You wanna always kind of ask people who are in a similar zone climate to you, what they're doing, what works, and then follow those people, talk to those people, talk to the people at your local garden center and your local gardening club, in your neighborhood even. There's a lot of um, other neighbors who garden in my neighborhood and we're always exchanging ideas of like, oh yeah, this worked for me, or yeah, no, that didn't work for me. Oh yeah, we've really had this pest a lot this year. And um, just being able to have that conversation can be so helpful. So definitely tap into your local communities because those can be such rich resources for you in your gardening journey. I do hope though that this video has been helpful to you in deciphering what is the difference between soil and mulch and compost if nothing else hopefully it's like the 30,000 foot overview I know that these rough definitions have been hugely helpful to me in defining what kind of mulch is best for my garden has been a huge success for me this year so I hope that this helps you if it does please uh, leave a comment and let me know it was helpful if you have questions please leave a comment as well and I'll do my best to answer those in the next video or in the upcoming videos if you like this video give it a thumbs up it helps us reach more in the community and thank you so so much for joining me today i will catch you guys in the next one potentially in another state actually that will be yeah in a couple videos you'll see me in the next in the next place that i'm going all right you guys thank you so much for joining me today i'll catch you guys in the next one bye